I'm going to report them. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our team call for February. Um, Caroline is at her sister's. I think it's a championship game. So I told her she was a champ for going to a basketball game past her due date. And she is, she said, if it wasn't a championship game, it'd be hard not to go. But she, I'm excited she was able to go. Um, so I will be leaving this morning for an, or just early for the announcements. And then Erica will be taking it over for the night. So excited. Um, so let's get started. Here is, these are Caroline's slides. I'm just sharing them for her. Um, so if this is your first team call, welcome. I'm Ashton, just filling in for Caroline tonight. Uh, but we're so excited for so many new faces around here. I've seen so many new girls um, sharing on Instagram and just showing up in the team page. So we're so excited that all of you are here um, and excited that... We always get together on Monday nights for our team call. So this is our team calendar for the rest of February. Um, we do have a team call tonight and next Monday as well. And for this Saturday, we do have a sip and sweat at seven. I have not seen a lot of people on there recently. So if you're feeling froggy this Saturday, there will be several of us on. I hope some of you show up. What we do um, is we just get on at seven. Some of us are doing a book study at 630. You are welcome to hop on if you want to. And then at seven, we cheers and some girls stay on to do their workout. So I encourage all of you, if you're new or if you used to get on and you just hadn't been on in a while, I encourage you all to join us. Same Zoom link on Saturday morning. So the March um, team calendar will be coming out soon. We have a lot of big things going on right now. This is the last week for your promo code for $20 off a challenge or a total solution pack. So make sure that your girls, your followers, anybody interested knows that you still have that $20 off code. We also have the mix bike discount code. You should have gotten that in your email. Um, so be talking about that, sharing about that. The code is good through most of March. So be sharing and encouraging people that this is a great deal on the mix bike, even for yourself. If y'all don't have a mix bike yet, this is a great opportunity to invest in one um, with the discount code. We also have the four week gut protocol and four weeks for everybody coming out in March. Um, Kirby has been doing a lot of digging into uh, the content and what's going on with that program. So y'all be looking in the team page for more details and stuff coming up in the next few weeks on the launch for the four week um, gut protocol and four weeks for everybody. And I think I saw when they were sharing on Instagram with filming that they're also doing some rides with that um, four week program too. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, action hours. I am, we have one on Wednesday and Thursday. I'll be leading one in the morning, Wednesday and Thursday. And then not Sony is doing one at 3 PM on the 25th. Um, so y'all make sure you're jumping on this action hours. If you ever have questions about how to do the tracker or what we do specifically, we would love to help guide you with the tracker. Um, so please jump on, ask questions and kind of just work together. It's really motivating when several of us get on to do the tracker, the tracker together. This is our changing lives leaderboard for February. Shout out to all the girls who have hit success club. I have not hit SCA. I'm pretty sure Sam did. I think our numbers got swapped. Um, but y'all, there are so many girls, the names on this board that are so close. Um, these numbers might be old. Your name may be listed that, but you haven't, you've already hit success club. Um, so congrats to everybody who has, and if you have not keep pushing, we still have the discount code for the rest of this month. Um, and the, the bike discount code to so many opportunities to share with your followers and your people to get them plugged in for this month. So this is our volume for February. Shout out to Elizabeth Dunn for being our leader and Courtney Foster showing up, showing out um, for, for our volume. And Caroline always says this, but 
yes, Success Club is very important and kind of our bread and butter when it comes to um, our goal and what we try to do for the month. But volume is also a great income producer, but also um, it just shows consistency and your customers who are coming back and ordering um, and staying plugged into your community and who love their products. So volume also speaks a lot to what's going on in your business as well. And our top recruiters, me, Brittany, and Erica bringing in, I'm sorry, the pictures are over it, but one each. Um, and yeah, any questions about what's coming up for March or the end of February or about the codes? Feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. All right. Our speaker tonight is my one of my purpose partners, Erica Brown. We both started together and it has just been such a blessing to run this race with her and just see her grow and flourish and freaking light fire everywhere she goes. Um, so I'm just so proud of her, but so excited to hear what she has to say. She's really touching on consistency and just continuing to show up and what helps her continue to show up um, and what God's been doing in her heart through this business and through her own consistency. So I am just so excited for Erica to be speaking and I'm going to hush and turn it over. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hi guys. I'm Erica. I see some names that I don't know. So um, Erica Brown. <laughs> uh, so first, before anything, um, I have really prayed over this and really prayed over um, just asking the Lord what he wanted me to speak on. And, um, I prayed over every single person who would be on this call. And I was like, if it's five people who, you know, I'm on the East coast, so it's, I'm usually sleeping by now, but I'm like, if it's five people who want to be awake for this, or if it's 45 people, like Lord, let it be exactly who needs to hear this because I'm speaking to me a year ago. That's what I'm speaking to. And even if you're not where I was a year ago, like, this is going to be great for you no matter what, because, um, these are things that I'm still doing and the Lord is still working in me. And so let me pray and then I will get into it. God, um, you are so, so good. And thank you, Lord, that you do not ebb and flow based on our emotion and our circumstances, but, um, you are con constant and unchanging. And I just heard a song and it just talked about how you are steady. And I love that picture. And so Lord, I let us abide in you daily. Let us, um, come humbly before the throne of Jesus and just know that like we are free from, um, condemnation, from shame, from, um, having to strive to, to earn your love, because that's not how you work. And I thank you that when you look at us, you see Jesus after we've accepted that gift of salvation. And so tonight I pray that Lord, nothing comes out of my mouth that isn't of you and your spirit that dwells in me. And that these girls would just um, have hearts that are soft and that they would just hear from you and that they wouldn't walk away from this, like pumped for a business only, but Lord, they'd be pumped to know their savior more and to make your name known. So we love you and we give you the glory. Amen. All right. My family, we like clap when we say amen for like some joke. I don't know. So like, she's always like, we love you, Jesus. Amen. And then I realized I'm like in a restaurant. Um, okay. So, <laughs> um, I am going to tell you a little bit about my background. So I am, I live in New York. I grew up here. I'm right by Niagara Falls. So if you're ever looking for a little vacation, it's pretty cold right now. So I wouldn't come right now, but, um, come in the next month. Cause I'm moving. So <laughs> come in the next month if you want to see the balls. Um, but I grew up in, as an athlete, I played soccer, like as long as I can remember. And then I actually played basketball as well. And that's where my heart was. And so I played basketball all through college and, um, it was my life. Like it taught me so, so much about, um, about if you're okay. But also if you do not engage with me in the chat box, I'm just going to turn it off because if you were with me in person, I would want you to be like shouting out amens and commands and let's go. And so that's how this is going to go. Um, and you can like nod and high five if you want to the camera. Um, but that's, I need some engagement here. Um, yeah. How do I make this like, so I can actually see your comments. There we go. All right. Sweet. Okay. So, um, 
yeah, so I was an athlete. And if you are an athlete, you can put this in the chat box. Maybe, you know, you learned so much about like character and not just teamwork. That's like the cliche of, of like sports, but you learn a lot about selflessness and working hard and not just physically, but like mentally pushing yourself. And so, um, I, had all of that in the back of my mind, loved working hard and pushing myself. I also felt like God was calling me to be a teacher. So I went to school for elementary education and got done and realized I do not want to teach. <laughs> like I, I love to teach, but I don't want to be a teacher. And so I had these desires of athletics. I had this desire to teach. I love women's ministry and I could not find anything that all this worked together with. And here comes coaching. So I had just had my second baby. Um, this was, I had my second baby in April of 2020 and I ended up becoming a challenger and a coach all at once for the first time, had no idea what Beachbody was. Um, I did insanity in high school, like in someone's classroom as like a thing, I don't know, an extracurricular. So September, 2020 is when I jumped in hot mess express ask ashton ask sam no idea what i was doing can i get an amen any <laughs> new coaches on here who are like ah or maybe you're not a new coach and you're still like ah <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> um and so i have to be honest that first year i did not see much fruit okay like nothing not money not sc points not growing my team like nothing and so I also like, you'd think like when you first start off as a coach, like, oh, at least you have your warm market, like people, you know, already people who are watching you and they're like, oh shoot, that sounds fun. And I, you know, I'm friends with her. So like I'll support her. Um, but I, I really didn't even have that. I feel like I can't, I came from like a Christian college and that was kind of like network marketing was a little bit like, eh, you know, everyone does it. So everyone was leery about it. So I wasn't getting a ton of support. It was more like skeptic skepticism, kind of keeping me at arm's length. Let's see if she can, you know, be trustworthy in this before anyone jumped in. I spent more than I was making because I was making nothing and I was buying the products. And that was really hard for me. Um, my husband was a little doubtful, a little skeptical because he was like, what you're like talking about this all the time. And you're spending what seems to be a lot of time when I'm at work and, you know, but I don't see the payoff. And I I'm sure some of you have felt that too. Uh, my heart and mind ebbed and flowed as another month went by and I still had like little to no interest and it was frustrating. Um, so in the chat box, have you been there? If you didn't already say, have you been there? Are you there now? Like, just say, yes. I just need to know, like, are we all kind of in the same realm here. Yeah. Tons. Yeah. New coach. Hi, Lauren. Welcome. This is not to scare you at all. I promise. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is all going somewhere really great. So you may be wondering, okay, so that was September, 2020. Then you fast forward to September, 2021. That was my one year mark. And how am I still here? Okay. Well, things got fiery. Like I am still here before a reason. Okay. And so even though on paper, after a year, I should have had every reason to walk away. I, because I wasn't making anything because spending more, my team wasn't growing. I was, I was a little discouraged. Like that's literally what I felt. And I remember talking to my husband, like, I, like, if this is what God wants, why is it not like, why am I not thriving in this? You know, I, I love what this is about, but like on paper, literally this makes no sense logically at all. Um, and so tonight I am going to give you three things that drove me to grind and keep my head, like focused tunnel vision. Like we're going to keep going and to stay the course. And that brought payoff in the business today, a little over a year and a half later. Point number one, get your notebooks. All right. Point number one, consistency before fruit, consistency before fruit. Think about this question. And in your heart and mind, please, 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 please answer. Honestly, you're not going to put this in the chat unless you're feeling it, but answer. Honestly, you're only going to be cheating yourself. If you try and fudge your answer or like lie to yourself, but take the money, take the paycheck out of this business. Do you actually want to be here? Like truly, do you want to be doing this? 
Do you want to be encouraging other women to show up in their health and fitness? Do you want to be cheering them on? Do you want to be thriving in your own journey? If that's a yes, then like stick with me. If that's a no, then you need to like figure out your why. Figure out why you even said yes to begin with, um, no matter how far into this business you are. Um, giving up crossed my mind what felt like every other day. <laughs> um, literally, I was back and forth every other day. I'd have a good day and I'd be like, yes, this is exactly what I want to do. And then I'd have a bad day and I'd be like, are you kidding me? Someone said no. And it's just like so discouraging when you're not really getting a lot of answers. And I was constantly asking God, like affirm, affirm Lord, like what I think you're calling me to. And <laughs> with no growth, I just sat defeated, uh, which we'll actually talk about later, how believing those negative thoughts and allowing them to kind of like those limited beliefs can really, really affect you down the line. Um, so even though I couldn't see the fruit and growth, I literally just could not shake the feeling that like I was where I was supposed to be. It didn't, it wasn't logical, but that's where I was supposed to be, um, in this space, in this season. And it had to be beyond success club points. It had to be because I wasn't hitting success club. And I was like, all right, this is deeper. This is so much deeper. And I also knew that my temperament, my personality is like, if I had like done awesome right away, I don't think I would have given God like any credit. Like, I think I would have, I would have quote unquote, but like, I would have been like, yeah, I'm pretty awesome. Like deep down, like, yeah, I am like a cool coach. Like I, I, I'm, I think I'm really affirming, and encouraging and, you know, and so I think there was a piece of that with like, God was like, really like breaking down some pride and wanting me to be like, all right, you literally can't do this alone. And so I'm going to show you that right off the bat. So we can actually build from there. Um, so I knew also at the time of not seeing success club points or anything like that, the fit for his glory community was changing my life. God's spirit was using it to transform my life, my own fitness journey, my heart. God had, I had no idea. Like I was going to need this community so badly. And I know you can get that as a challenger, but as a coach, it's like next level. Um, because we need each other in order to show up, not just as challengers, but like in this business, because it's hard, it's rocky, nothing good comes easy. And if it does, it's going to get hard. <laughs> and that's just how it works. Um, so shout out to this community. Thank you so much um, for pushing me. Cause I would not be here without you. Um, another thing is like my pur purpose partners, Sam and Ashton, we started together and we are still rocking and rolling. We were just on a call together before this praying and just Ashton was just thanking the Lord that like, we, we would call each other out on our crap. Like if we wanted to quit and yeah, we were like gentle, like, okay, if this is really not something you want to ever do, then like, okay. But it was like, are you just being selfish? Are you being lazy? Like, what is this coming from? Where's the, and then it always came out that we were just in a bad spot. And so shout out to purpose partners. If you don't have one, get one. We'll talk more about that later. Um, we have had this conversation so many times. If we quit coaching, like in that heat of the moment, when you're like, Oh, this is just annoying. It's hard. It's I'm struggling. I'm not getting anybody to join. If we quit, like, listen, we'd still be doing the things. Like I'd still be showing up on zoom. I'd still be encouraging these other girls. I would still be drinking my energize. So like, why not, why not do it all together and get paid? Like it just makes sense, you know? And so think about that too. If you actually want to be here, what is it going to, what would it look like if you even did step back? Not saying you can't guys, but I'm talking to coach. You're all working coaches, hopefully. So like, I'm talking to you because you're still in this business. It can be hard to get up each day and do the coach things. And at the same time, watch other coaches ride the wave of success. Um, I did that month after month of just showing up and being like, okay, God, is this the month I'm going to hit SC six at least? And I'd be like sitting at zero and I'm like, shoot. But like, I, I did genuinely want these other coaches to thrive and succeed because I love them and I'm cheering for them. And we really are on the same team, but it always left me confused and discouraged and like, what isn't, what isn't clicking? What's not, what's not working. Um, and so, yeah, if you've been in that, definitely put that in the chat because I want you all to know, like, you're not alone. And those seasoned coaches, we've been there. We really, have, I'm not even that season. We've been there. Um, and so you're not alone as a new coach either. 
Um, but don't be discouraged when other people are doing well, because they always, what's that? Like Caroline, I said, like, don't compare your day one to day someone's day 300. Like it's just not healthy in any sense, not just your business. Um, this morning I was listening to a Jordan Lee Dooley podcast, her newest one with Ken Coleman. I don't know if anyone has listened to it yet, but I'm halfway through. And he actually talked about three reasons why you're stuck. And these are always the reasons. So it's either fear, doubt, or pride. Three reasons, fear, doubt, or pride. And you may not be able to like control those things and like when they come, but so you're there, you're stuck. Now you have a choice of what to do with it. Are you going to sit paralyzed in one of those things? Or are you going to pivot? Are you going to like actually make lemons out of lemonade? Wait, lemon, lemonade out of lemons. Are you going to do that? Um, you know, think back to the Israelites, like they were in the wilderness and they were free essentially, like, and they were out there and <laughs> All of a sudden they were like, oh, we're hungry. Oh, we're thirsty. Oh my gosh, you let us out here to die in the wilderness. And God's like, no. And they're like, we want to go back to Egypt. Let's just go be slaves again. Like, really? Really? You were that like closed minded that you think being a slave in a foreign country is better than like literal freedom from bondage. And I think like if they had continued to live in fear, they would have completely missed out on what God had for them. They would have missed it. Yeah, it was risky. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah, it took way longer than they thought it was going to take. But they came out and they actually got to like the honey and like the sweet land that the Lord promised. And so don't forget any of that. There's so many little nuggets in that story. Um, at the one year mark, I remember talking to Caroline and I'm like, this isn't for me. Nope, can't do it. And she was like, okay, like, let's really think through this. Um, and <laughs> I came to the, she, she called me out and she was like, are you just like doing the tracker? Or are you like doing the tracker? And if you know, you know, because you can passively do that tracker. Um, yeah, there's a difference Lauren. Um, and so I came to this realization that if I was going to do this any longer, I was not going to half heart this at all. Like I was hundred percent in and Elisa and I talked about that. We're gonna give it one more year. That's what we said. And so here we are six months into that second year and things have totally switched. I don't know if she can agree, but no more, no more mindless trackering. Um, I started inviting like a boss and any advice I can give you for like your tracker is take the emotion out of it. Doesn't matter if it's your cousin, doesn't matter if it's the girl you met at the gas station. It could be some random girl from Australia. Take the emotion out of inviting because don't get, don't like put your answer in their mouth. They, they might say yes. The most unlikely people have reached out to me that I never invited because I had this preconceived notion that they weren't going to be my girl. They weren't going to want to do it because whatever reason, and I make it up. Um, and so I am going to read you this thing. Um, I don't know. Have any of you read the book Atomic Habits? Yes. A couple of you. Okay. So you're going to hear, um, hold on, let me pull up the story on my phone. You're going to hear this story about ice melting, um, which is so good. Cause we're talking about consistency, right? Uh, so just, I'm going to just read it so I don't botch it, but let's imagine for a second that there is an ice cube sitting in a room that is 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Your goal is to melt the ice cube. Let's also imagine that you don't know anything about ice or at what temperature it melts. You decided to turn up the temperature because a warmer temperature must melt the ice. You turn the thermostat to 27 degrees and nothing happens. Slightly disappointed that the ice is still solid, you decide to turn up the temperature, 28 degrees. You figure that it must have to be warmer, so you try 29 degrees. Shoot, disappointment builds and you're losing patience. But you try again, 30 degrees, you're hopeful. Disappointment turns to frustration, but you'll give it another go, 31 degrees. Now frustration turns to discouragement as your effort appears wasted. In the back of your mind, you remember hearing something about 32 and melting. So in a last ditch effort, you try one more time, 32 degrees. With six attempts and absolutely no perceptible change, you throw in the towel. This is what happens to all of us at some point or another. 
It might be in our business or in another area of our lives. We put an effort and stop short just because the results haven't come. We stop pursuing an intervention or chasing a goal because our effort doesn't match our expectations. We don't trust the process and we stop short when the results are right around the corner. One more degree and the ice melts. One more. Sometimes all it takes is one more attempt, one more week, one more push. I'm not telling you to keep banging your head against a wall. No, there has to be critical thinking and appropriate adjustments along the way. But the path is never straight and the road is never smooth. Boom. Holy cow. What an incredible, what an incredible analogy. Thomas Edison says our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Another one from Albert Hubbard is there's no failure except in no longer trying. Girls, not hitting success club is not failure. That is not failure. Imagine all the lives you're impacting in that time. If you feel called to this, despite all obstacles, freaking own it, freaking own it. Get some ownership. Stop listening to everyone else. If it's not, I remember there was a coach on the team and she was so much fun. Okay. And she's not coaching anymore, but she was like life of the party. And she did not do anything normal. Like we would have all these options and she would do her own thing. But you know how many girls she would sign up every month and they loved it because she brought the fun. She brought what she could do for it. Um, so maybe you're still trying to get your cold market to your warm market because you're a new coach. Keep doing the tracker during that. Okay. You may not see successful points in the moment, but keep doing the tracker. I promise you it will pay off months down the road. That's just how this game works. Um, in the meantime, what are your strengths? What are your strengths? Okay. Um, in the time where I was not hitting success club, I love in-person interactions. So you know what I did? I started planning in-person workouts. Why not? I would watch a non-equipment beach body workout and I would write down the workout and I would just put it out there. Any local girls meet me at the river at 10 o'clock on this day. And I brought packets of Energize. I had music playing and you better believe people were walking and they were looking at me funny. Some girls apparently came for a yoga class down the way. They thought I was the yoga instructor. So they stopped and I was like, oh, strangers. And then they realized that we were about to do a hit workout <laughs> and they left. But I was like, hey, Maybe they heard some of the music playing. I don't know. And so I started, yeah, doing these Jesus energized sweat. I would do a 10 minute devotional, like just bringing Jesus into that realm and letting them see like this. It can be so different. It can be so different than anything you've experienced in your own health. And so, um, okay. So maybe in-person workouts and like public speaking is totally not your jam. I get it. What if you are really good at encouraging people? write some encouragement notes. I shared this before, like get those cheap, those cheap, they're free paint chips from a store. They have super creative names, grab all of them because that's what I do. And I'm trying to be stealthy in Lowe's or Walmart. And I'm shoving like six at a time in my pockets and like take a loop around and come back. Like, oh, I need all these colors for my house. Take those and like, think of people in your lives that like those little names remind you of, and then like send that or your girls in your challenge group. Like that is super intentional and you don't have to be able to talk in person with people. Um, maybe you're really good at like graphic design, create some unique trackers for them, serve your people, blow their minds with the expectations. They came into your group thinking, oh, she might reach out like for the first month. No, you will give incentive to show up. You will reach out when they are not posting. You will send them those paint chip cards. You will do in person, like whatever it is, send them coffee once, once a year. Like it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You say happy birthday on their birthday. So many cool things where you can serve them and they can, they can just see that like, man, this is way bigger because that girl loves Jesus. That's what this is about. And so, okay. That's all under consistency, consistency before fruit, the fruit will come. I promise you stick with it. The fruit will come. Point number two, kick complacency in the face kick complacency in the face. So in other words, be killing apathy or it will kill you. Not literally, maybe be killing apathy or it will be killing you. Proverbs 31, 27, the second half says she does not eat the bread of idleness. Um, some of us are reading the book when striving cease by Ruth Cho Simmons. And so I'm not telling you to like burn out or strive in that way. Like that's not what this girl in the Bible is doing she, she's working hard in a godly sense. And so show up with your calling and work hard, steward your time, have boundaries, obviously, but like know that you need to, yeah, 
you need to do it with excellence. And so, um, I heard this question asked on a podcast, how do you know when you just need rest or it's like, like genuinely need rest or when you're just giving in to like mediocrity and you know, the easy way being comfortable. And the answer that person said was, well, like 90% of the time we're just giving in to comfort because we're just, the human race is very accustomed to comfort. And so we always choose that way. Um, <laughs> when I played college basketball, my coach was actually a WNBA player. And so she was like really intense <laughs> for where we were. And I love her. I actually was just talking to her the other day, but I remember vividly, she had a temper. I remember vividly one day I was on defense. And um, if you know anything about like basketball defense, you have to be like low. I mean, we've done defensive slides. If you've done beach body workouts, like you have to get low and shuffle. That is how it's done. If you stand up straight, you're super unstable and, um, you're likely to foul somebody. But I remember I did not shuffle. I stood up and I like just kind of moved quick. Like I stepped and flailed my arm, followed the girl and my coach just like blew a whistle. And this was in practice. And she ripped into me. Like I thought I, I was like, Oh shoot. Like, this is not good. And she all, because I didn't shuffle. I stood up and stepped. And she said, why did you in front of everyone? I mean, everyone in the gym, why did you do that? Why did you stand up? Why didn't you shuffle your legs? You know, the position like this and that. And I was like, because it was easier. And she, that was not a good answer. (laughs) That was honest, but it was not the right answer. And she just said, like, just beat that into me that like, yeah, it was easier, but I lost a point because I was lazy. I fouled somebody. And so that goes against me in the game. And so then that's a bigger chance that I'm not playing anymore. And it just, there were so many consequences because I chose the easier way instead of feeling the burn in my legs and taking that side step. Um, so for example, in our business, all right. So we set out for a new week. It's Sunday night. We're planning our week. We're like, I'm going to do my tracker five days, five days. We show up all five days. We do it in full. And I'm talking like still invited coaches full every day. And cause I know some of us skip that one. Um, so we invite all the coaches every day and you were tired at the end, but you were so proud. You finished your tracker five days. That's such a big deal. Right. And you took both of those Saturday and Sunday off and you were like, I earned it. No bites, no interest. Bummer. Okay. But you prep for the next week. All right, I'm going to do it again. Five days. Let's go. And you really do genuinely want to finish it five days, but you trust on time and you skip the coach invites. No big deal. Didn't really fulfill the entire tracker. You skip the coach invites. And by the time Friday comes, you just didn't have the space for it. So you just don't do your tracker Friday. Okay. See what I'm saying? And in your eyes, you're like, that's still success. I still like completed four out of the five, didn't do the coach invites, but like, eh, I don't really know that many people who would coach. (laughs) I'll be the first to admit when we give ourselves an inch before we know it, we will have gone a mile shuffling our feet slowly and not even in the right direction. We will end up so much further from our goal when we compromise because compromise also compounds good things compound compromise also does. And we will end up further away than we wanted to be from the beginning. Um, think about it in your walk with Jesus. Um, they say like, I forget, there's like a casting crown song, a really old one. And it talks about like, um, fading. I don't remember. I probably should looked it up, but like, it's a, Oh, it's a slow fade. That's literally the name of the song. It's a slow fade when you give yourself away and like, you don't even realize you're going there. And so that's the same with the business guys. We're going to be nowhere near our goals. When we start compromising, show up and give everything. If you have one hour, I know Shay is like known for that. When she shows up, she has one hour to give and she will give everything. And she is one of the top coaches on our team because she proves that true. Let's not just walk away saying, okay, so we're going to choose, um, courage over comfort. Yes. Let's do it together. Woo. Let's hope it works. You know, (laughs) it's so not how this works. Um, guys get some nitty gritty accountability. Get, get in. Okay. So we have this group thing called business builders. That's someone who's like in this group and they want to go for it. They need the accountability. They're like, okay, um, pedal to the metal. I'm like where I was at a year. Like I'm in it for real. I'm doing this. 
no matter what it takes. And so, um, I want to encourage you to like seek out your coach and like what that looks like if you're ready to do that. Um, cause accountability is great there. Also purpose partners. I'm serious. If you do not have one or even two people to run this with, like put it on our team page and just say like kind of the stage of life you're at, or it doesn't even matter about the stage of life, but someone is bound to jump on there and say, okay, I need one too. Let's do this together. They have been huge in holding me to my standards of what I need to hit. Okay. Whew. So consistency before fruit kick complacency in the face. And lastly, don't just be here actively show the heck up with diligence. Uh, we hear diligence a lot, but, um, I want to kind of give you a word picture of what this like actually means. So we all know what motivation is. Motivation is showing up because you want to showing up because everyone else is, and it's fun and it, it feels good. And there's not really any like other outside push that you need. Um, but let's say the motivation goes away because it does and can't always be trusted. And then, um, you rely on discipline and discipline is showing up when you're not motivated, but you're showing up. Diligence is the next step. That is, I'm not motivated, but I'm going to show up, but you're not just showing up. You're showing up and you're working as hard as you can. You are giving your best. You are showing up with excellence. That's diligence. And that's what God calls us to do. And so I want to encourage you, like show up with diligence. Yes. In the mundane. Yes. When you're discouraged. Yes. When you're at SC 90. Okay. Show up in the nitty gritty details. Just show up and own it. Know and believe that you are the girl for the job and that God has called you. If you really believe that, then guys, you will show up and you'll want to show up and serve. You can't just walk away. You know, that's what me. I was like, okay, I'm not hitting these goals. I'm not seeing any fruit tangibly in like the business world, but I know that God called me to this. And if I walk away, like I'm, I'm not obeying what he's called me to do. And I, so I couldn't just throw my hands up and walk away. Um, Jess Connolly says in her book, you are the girl for the job, which is such a good book, a little plug there. But when we're rooted in a desire to serve, help and love others, well, we'll be set up for mission in a beautiful way with excellence. Yes, our job is fitness, right? But we're not just aiming to sprinkle Jesus dust on a culturally saturated and influenced industry, right? Oh, no, ma'am. We are not doing that. Jesus is it, period. All of it, the whole thing. The whole shebang. That's what I wrote down. Super cheesy. The whole shebang. We as coaches understand that our fitness and health are deeply spiritual. But guys, these people watching us on Instagram, they don't know that. They have no idea that surrendering their health and fitness could change everything. Everything. Listen, like the hope that Jesus can not only bring to their health, but their lives not just freedom from body shame or food addiction, but freedom from the chains of sin and death. Woo! Galatians 5, 1 says for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand therefore, stand firm. Therefore do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. I love um, this other quote from Jess's book. We think our responsibility is to just tell everyone how they should interact with Jesus. But this is where it gets personal to our businesses, guys. What is most life-changing and when is when we interact with Jesus in front of others and let them see the difference he makes in our lives. They're watching us guys. They're watching us on our Instagram people in your circle who are in real life with you, who may not have joined you yet. They're watching why, why they haven't succeeded because you surrender your walk of fitness and health to the Lord. Right. And if you're watching this and you haven't, then like, there's something deeper for you here. There really is. It's not just getting up at four Ashen, 4 a.m. No, okay. Not everyone does that at like 6 a.m. to work out. Um, guys, our job is to point to the one, the one who literally can break the chains of sin and death and condemnation and guilt and all of that health related to, but like I said, like the heavy, true, like life stuff, the deep stuff. You didn't know I was going to be preaching tonight. Did you? <laughs> Um, so that's where I actually want to leave us. If you leave this call pumped about call pumped up about anything, just one thing, it's making more of the name of Jesus and what he's called us to, to carry whatever that looks like. And maybe you don't feel close to him right now, but you're on this call and 
I want you to consider that the Holy Spirit is using this call to like kind of till the soil of your heart and that he's, he wants you to know him deeper tonight and to realize like he's given you this business to make more of him. It's not about us. It is not about us because if it is, we would have (laughs) quit, we would fail. And we have such a unique opportunity to point to the one who has changed our own lives. And so, um, yeah, that's all of it. That was a lot. My voice is like crusty, but I just want to repeat the point. So consistency before fruit, kick complacency in the face and show the heck up with diligence guys. I hope that was an encouragement to you. That's literally been my life for the last year and a half of just like all in a nutshell. So this is actually really good. Bring it all kind of cohesively together. Girl, you were freaking preaching. Oh my gosh. Okay. So any questions for Erica? We have plenty of time. Drop them in the chat. Unmute yourself. This is super casual tonight. And I feel like Erica unpacked so, so much about consistency that even some new coaches, it might be hard to grasp it now, just starting out. So please ask any questions that you have. Erica, so many people are saying they're so glad they didn't skip this call. (laughs) I love it. It's Um, because I prayed. I prayed that God would bring the right people to this call. I want to ask because I've kind of walked through it with you, but what do you feel like you've learned in this consistency, not even just in the business, but in life in general? Like, how do you feel like being a mom and being a wife and um, so those of you who don't know, I did 75 hard. Ashton and I and Aaron did it um, a year ago, almost to the date. Mm-hmm. And something I didn't realize was that I was really giving into my emotions. And like, as a mom, I, my husband and I are, were in like deep in ministry and we just recently stepped down because we're moving, but it was, it was messy. And I found myself so overwhelmed and literally, um, if I wasn't consistent in my workouts and in my time with the Lord, um, and at the time, like 75 hard is two workouts a day and there one has to be outdoors. And so there was this like intentionality with my time management. Um, and then we'd have like worship practice, like 9 PM. And I'd be like, Oh, I gotta get up like before the next day, you know, like just so intentional with like rest and everything. So, um, I, I think just not turning to food for comfort was a huge one. Like there was not an option because there's no compromise. And that taught me a lot about when I do give myself an inch, I'll take a mile. And, um, oh man, God just brought me right to him, um, through some really, really gut wrenching times in ministry. And I know Lisa and I were kind of going through the same thing at the same time. And Lauren, <laughs> I feel like we all did, um, church is messy, but we, yeah. And now looking back, I'm like, dang, if I didn't have that consistency, I would have, I think I would have had a false view of God because I would have been just relying a lot on my own, my own strength. And it's so true. I hear, um, a quote all the time is how you do one thing is how you do everything. And it's so true. Like if you're giving yourself an inch in this business and then you take a mile and sit on the couch and don't get things done, like you're probably doing that in other areas of your life, but if you're sticking to discipline and you're showing up and you're putting in the work and you're leaning into the community and when you're struggling, you're reaching out to somebody and saying, I'm struggling, help me show up. Like when you start doing that in your business, if you even take an hour a day and show up with consistency, it will a hundred percent spill out into the rest of your life. It can't help, but spill out into the rest of your life. Um, and so I've just been, so encouraged by Erica's just consistency and no matter what season I've seen her in, in the past year and a half, it's like, you can tell God's hand was on it, in it, all over it. And she was thanking him for it every minute, regardless of if she was seeing fruit, regardless of if she was seeing any kind of growth, she was thanking God just for getting her up and getting her at it, um, with whatever she had for that day. So it has just been so, so, so encouraging Erica to watch you grow and continue to show up and you have spurred the rest of us on, um, every single day that you keep showing up and encouraging us. So we're thankful for you. And this just shows the power of this community y'all like 
Erica and I met on Instagram. Okay. (laughs) This is the power of this community. And if you truly, truly lean in, get to know the girls on this call, get to know the girl on girls on this team. Like there is a community available here for y'all that will change your life. If you let it, um, don't back away. If you're embarrassed or scared or whatever, lean in, don't back away. Um, and that's exactly what Erica did. And that now she's seeing fruit and success from them. So any questions, takeaways, you guys get to go to bed 10 minutes earlier tonight. (laughs) Anything else, anybody, anybody got a few words of encouragement for Erica or any of the new coaches on here? I feel like we rarely have time to throw out a couple of words when we're all together. So please feel free to shout out anything. Anybody excited about the uh, gut protocol? I'm pretty pumped about it because my gut needs some healing. So, all right. If nothing else, Erica, there's just tons and tons and tons of thank yous in the chat. I will pray for us. Um, yes, two action hours, Wednesday and Thursday, I will, um, share the zoom link. I'll share it on the Facebook group and the business builders so people can join, but I will pray us out and we get to go to bed. Hey, should we take a picture? Yes. Let's do that first before everybody hops off. Okay. I'm going to do a boomerang since we still have two pages. So y'all just wiggle around or something fun okay one two three two three Woo. okay rook don't bark i have to pray lord we just come to you tonight just so thankful for the fire that you have put in Erica's heart, God, and the words that you gave her to share with us tonight. Um, It is just so amazing, Lord, the work that you are doing in each and every one of us on this call. It is so cool, God, to just see you um, continue to transform us, to sanctify us, Lord, to just teach us how to love like Jesus. That's why we're here. We have been given this love and this life, Lord, that we don't deserve. And we have been freely given this life and this love, Lord. So I just pray that you will continue to teach us and refine us on how to share it with those around us. Um, Lord, I'm so thankful for this community. I know it has radically changed my own life. And I can only imagine how many other women on this call, God, have been so touched through this community and the work that you're doing in it. I thank you, Lord, for Caroline and this vision that she had, the consistency that she built to build a team like this. Um, And even when she's not present, God, look at what she has left. Um, And the team that is continuing to grow is just we stand in awe, and I say this every day, but I just can't believe we get paid to do this. <laughs> this is a job um, because it's absolutely amazing to have this opportunity. So, Lord, I just pray a blessing over Erica and her business, God. I pray a blessing over each and every coach on this call, their teams, their families, their um, consistency in growing and showing up, Lord. I just pray that you will continue to put a fire in us to wake up every morning, serve you to the best of our abilities, and God, always remember to give the glory back to you. This is all done in your name, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity that you've chosen us to be a part of it, but Lord, the glory is all back to you. So I pray a blessing over our week and a good night's sleep. Amen. Thank you guys again. This was so, this, uh, this is so up my alley. So I I appreciate you guys coming on and not skipping. (laughs) You did amazing. We love you. Um, I know you already asked about questions, but I just thought of one. Yeah. Um, Erica, with you saying that um, it took you a while to like make an income, how did you share about coaching? while honestly sharing like that it didn't make you money in the beginning that's that's Um, something I I struggle with I didn't really talk about the money part um right away but you know what actually a huge draw she doesn't even know this Emily Bell I like came across her page because Caroline tagged her in something at the time when I was just like being a stalker and watching all the coaches and she mentioned something about like having extra money for her car payment or something like that and I remember being like what she made like $400. Like that's, 
that's crazy. Like doing fitness, like what? And so she has no idea. That was like a huge factor. I didn't sign up under her. Sorry, Emily, if you're listening to this, but <laughs> I, I heard it. And so, um, so, and I, that is something I really did struggle with. And that is a huge reason why I didn't talk about coaching, but they say you kind of like, um, get what you talk about. Like, so if you talk about challenging, you know, like being challenger, then you're going to get challengers. If you talk about coaching, you're going to get coaches. And I think that's a huge reason why I don't have working coaches under me is because I didn't talk about it for a year. And, um, and now I am. So I think, I think just, you don't really need to, I think you could just need to skirt around it. Maybe it's not like you're not being truthful, but I think that's more of like a one-on-one conversation when you're not making money yet. And you can just say, yeah, talk about the mission, talk about what they can do, um, and like leading a team and, um, how this even as like a coach, how the coaching community is like life-changing, like a, like a next level, then just challenging. Hopefully that helped. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. And even like personal development leadership, like the stuff you're doing because you're a coach that you wouldn't be doing just as somebody working out in their living room, you know, you can share about that stuff too, which has nothing to do with income. All right, ladies, good night. See you at 4 (laughs) a.m.